Okay guys, just a quick video now on witches. Um, this is a really, really good topic um, and if it pops up in the exam it's always usually a really good question for you to answer. Um, so we're going to look at witches and witchcraft, um, we're going to look at the laws, give you some key dates that you can get into your answers to get more marks. Um, I'm going to look at why people believed in witchcraft um, and then I'm going to hopefully, if I've got time, just quickly go over Matthew Hopkins and have a quick look at him um, and the importance of him as an individual. So um, factors relating to this topic, um, number one, religion, unsurprisingly. Uh, religious change and the role of religion in witchcraft is something we're going to be talking about. Um, governments, in particular kings, um, their beliefs and the laws that they pass. And then changes in society and people's attitudes, um, as you probably probably aware of if you've watched the Vagabonds video, um, huge social and economic changes in society which are going to have a huge impact on um, on people and their beliefs. And then finally poverty, um, being poor is always one of those things that has an impact. So to start off with, um, changes to the law. Um, so I'm just going to start by saying that witchcraft is not a new crime, uh, sorry, a new idea. Um, or a new crime. It's just that from about 1542, it's officially recognised as a crime. Um, people have always believed in evil spirits and demons and, you know, little creatures that come out and do the devil's work. Um, this is part and parcel of Christian belief. Um, if you believe in God, then you have to believe in the opposite, which is the devil. And people believe that the devil had his own little agents and creatures to go out at night and, and do do horrible things evil things to people okay so in 1542 as a result of um splitting with rome and the uh, the catholic church losing its place in english society as a result of henry the eighth and his laws um, witchcraft becomes a crime against authority um, and is punishable by death okay so henry the eighth makes witchcraft a crime in 1542 and um, in 1563 under elizabeth the first um, the law defines uh, minor, minor witchcraft and major witchcraft, but essentially it's the death penalty still. So there's no real changes there. Um, in this period, 1542 through to 1604, sees uh, witchcraft being treated as a, a crime, um, a criminal offence punishable by death. Um, in 1604, uh, King James I toughens the laws. Um, and what he does is um, he enforces uh, major witch hunts and King James I is a really, really interesting character to talk about because he absolutely 100% believed in witches. And he actually believed that he'd been the target of spells um, and uh, assassination attempts by witches um, and that they were real and they were out there and they had to be dealt with um, in, in a really, really harsh way. Um, and he actually went as far as writing a book which um, he published in uh, 1597 called Demonology. And demonology, which I'll talk about later on, is the book where uh, swimming the witch comes from, the idea that you can swim a witch. Um, and over the next 200 years, you're going to see around 2,000 people um, arrested, found guilty and executed as witches. Okay, And the majority of these are going to be old, vulnerable women uh, who can't protect themselves um, who can't fight back, who don't have husbands to stand up for them, okay? So, why did people believe in witches and witchcraft? Okay, well, let's have a quick look at the first factor that we're going to look at, and it's fear, and in particular, this is related to religion. Um, so, we've got religious problems um, from the uh, mid-1500s mid through to um, the mid-1600s, and the key thing just to talk about here really is the change from um, Catholicism to Protestantism, back to Catholicism, then to Protestantism. And, you know, very quickly, if we just go through this, for example, um, Henry VIII was Catholic. His son, Edward VI, was a Protestant. Um, after him, it was his sister, Mary I, Bloody Mary, who's a Catholic. After her, it's Elizabeth I, who's a Protestant. And what you see in this period, really, is that people stop feeling safe. Um, they feel like they're, they're, they're exposed to evil. Um, Part of this comes from the fact that the Catholic Church, um, if you felt like you were, or, uh, you'd, you'd had a, a curse or a spell put on you, or you were the target of witches or some kind of evil, um, the place to go was your local Catholic Church, and your priest would do some kind of exorcism or uh, pray for you and protect you from evil. With the rise of Protestantism, um, and obviously you know a complete abandonment of the Pope and the Catholic Church. 
Um, religion, religion really did become quite DIY. Uh, Protestants and extreme Protestants, known as Puritans, believed that actually, you know, your relationship with God was a personal one, and that actually, as a result of this, you had to go out and deal with um, evil and witchcraft yourself. So it's no surprise that as a result of Protestantism in England, we see people like Matthew Hopkins, who by 1645 is travelling all around East Anglia um, as a self-appointed witch finder general, um, arresting and uh, trying and executing witches, um, making quite a considerable amount of money from it as well. Um, so the first real real factor is your religious problems and your religious changes, and this this idea that there's there's religion is changing and that people no longer feel safe from evil uh, and that you have to go out and deal with witches yourself okay second one is uh, social and economic problems um, and in particular the idea of poverty so you know it's very similar to vagabonds you have poor harvests you have rising um, um, populations which mean more employment um, you have failed crops um, food prices are going up and people can't explain why these things are happening. So, you know, you're a farmer and you lose a full field full of um, full of crops. You blame it on witches. You blame it on e on evil, evil events. Um, you, you know, your, your cows get ill and sick and catch a disease and die. It's going to be the work of witches. OK, and this this really is superstition in, in, in play. But, you know, people use it for everything. For example, like, you know, uh, losing a, a family member to, to, to illness, we, we today can explain that scientifically, and to them, they couldn't, it was, it was obviously the work of witches, okay? Um, third point I'm going to make is changes in society, um, you've got huge changes in society that are caused by social and economic issues and religion, and to make things even worse, um, in 1642 you've got the English Civil War, um, which essentially is uh, Parliament under um, Oliver Cromwell going to war against uh, the Cavaliers and Charles I, who's the son of James I. Um, and this is just makes things even worse. You've got neighbour fighting against neighbour, you've got distrust. Um, and between 1642 and 1649, um, the world is turned upside down. England is in absolute chaos. Um, and it's no surprise that this is the period when Matthew Hopkins does most of his witch hunting um, and I always remember 1645 as being a, a really good date to remember. Smack bang in the middle of the English Civil War. Um, and it's when Matthew Hopkins is, is doing his witch finding and, and, and such. And the fourth one is government and the role of, of in particular, King James I. Um, now, I talked before about King James I and his belief in witches. Um, and it's really important just to note that this is a king. This is the, the head of the government in England telling people that witches exist that they are dangerous and they are serious and they are a threat and that you should we need to deal with them and he came up like i said before with the idea of swimming a witch that if you blessed a pond or um a lake um and threw the witch in um the water if cuz being holy water would be being blessed um, if the witch uh, was really a witch the water would push her away and keep her floating on the surface Whereas if she, was, uh, she wasn't a witch and she was an innocent woman, she would be accepted by the water and she would sink to the bottom, which isn't great really, is it? Um, so he came up with the idea of swimming a witch um, and he wrote this in his book, Demonology. Um, so that's really important because you've got a king who people are going to respect and follow telling people that witches exist. Okay. Um, now, before I talk about Matthew Hopkins, I'm just going to quickly make a note about um, royal judges and the assize judges, which... Um, I talked about in one of the earlier videos. Um, one of the main reasons why the English Civil War uh, makes makes the, the whole witch uh, witch witchcraft thing uh, a lot more difficult is that these uh, travelling judges who probably would have dealt with witchcraft um, they can't get around the country um, and they can't visit um, different parts of the country in order to um, and to exact justice. Um, so during the Civil War period. And it's probably one of the reasons why Matthew Hopkins is able to get away with it so much. They can't do their judge as judges. And so literally, people are left to deal with witches themselves. They're left vulnerable. Um, and as such, they take the law into their own hands. Okay, um, So that's one of the main reasons why I think um, Matthew Hopkins is able to get away with what he does. And just talking quickly about Matthew Hopkins, I'm going to try and keep this under 10 minutes. Um, he's a Puritan. He's a failed lawyer. Um, he gave himself the title Witchfinder General, 
Um, and he basically uses the, the chaos of the English Civil War to hunt witches um, across East Anglia and the southern counties. Um, and he, he makes a lot of money from this. Um, he turns up in a village, identifies uh, what he calls, what he, you know, he deems to be a witch, which would usually be a vulnerable old woman who can't defend herself, and, and then charges the local, um, the local authorities a lot of money um, to um, to deal with this witch. Um, I won't have time in this video to talk about um, identifying witches and the way they deal with witches, but when you're revising this, make sure you know how to identify a witch, so that's your devil's marks, um, those kind of things, and how Matthew Hopkins dealt with, with witches and how he... Um, how he got confessions out of them. So things like walking the witch, sleep deprivation, that kind of thing. It's um, pretty nasty what he did to people. Uh, but there you go. So hopefully that's um, witches covered for you. Um, and there's enough dates and factors in there to help you with any exam questions.